Hey guys, I uh, wanted to talk to you today about the dangers in bugging out. Um, things that you probably know about, but I figured I'd try to compile them into a uh, more compact uh, video for you. Uh, you've got all sorts of things that, that, that you have to worry about if you're bugging out. Not, I mean, just economic or societal collapse or political collapse or you know, roving hordes of zombies with guns, whatever. Um, I'm just talking about what you're going to run into when you bug out, or you could run into it. Uh, first thing I would think that, you know, that you're going to run into that, that, you know, it's not even real common. Okay. And that would be bears. Okay. You got your black bears and your grizzly bears and your polar bears. Now don't ask me about polar bears. I know nothing about them and I'm not going to put anything about them in this video because I have no clue what I'm talking about. Okay. But as far as black bears go, most black bears would rather leave you alone, okay? If you make enough noise when you're going along, and that might be an issue in a bug-out situation, you might be trying to be quiet, okay? But you need to make enough noise to scare any wildlife away from you, unless you're actively hunting. Now, from what I understand, black bear meat's pretty good, but do be careful that the bear can attack you back, okay? Um, but you make a lot of noise. Now, with bears, you don't look them directly in the eye, okay? You kind of look off to the side a little bit, and you make noise, and you wave your arms, and you get bigger, and you open your coat. You know, whatever the case may be, if you're alone, uh, you're more risk than if you're with somebody else. So if you get bug out, take your buddy with you, you know? I always made a joke about you don't have to, unru you don't have to outrun the bear, just got to outrun your buddy, but that's just a joke, okay? Um, <clears throat> make noise. Now, with black bears... Um, if they attack, your best bet's to fight and fight hard. And their nose, their snout, and their eyes are their weak spots. So carry a walking stick with you. A good stout one. Not something that's half rotted that you picked up off the forest floor that, that is easy, that, that's easily broken. Okay? You know, have a good walking staff with you. That's a good thing to have for many reasons. Um, but if you whack them right across the nose, just as hard as you can get it. Okay? Uh, if you have a big knife. Slash them across the nose. Try to break, try to cut their snout off, okay, if they're attacking you. With a black bear, you fight back, okay? Now, um, with a grizzly bear, it's a little different, okay? Fighting a grizzly bear, you're probably going to lose, okay? Doesn't mean you can't fight, but from what I understand, now, please, everybody, do your own research on this, and I'll put some links down below for some of the things I'm talking about, but not all of them. Um, but with grizzly bears, your best bet is to play dead. Okay. That's what I understand. Now, personally, I don't see myself playing dead and, and like letting a bear maul me like the guy in the Revenant. Okay. I'm sorry. I would rather fight back than sit there and die. But that's me. Um, of course, if I'm bugging out, I'm going to be armed with guns, knives, and a walking stick, a staff, a big, nice, long, six-foot, he thick, heavy staff, okay? Now, you can you can buy those uh, chair rails that are round that are, you know, they're pretty good size around. You can buy dowel rods, um, you know, get the bigger, a little bit bigger diameter one, sand it down, finish it up so it doesn't get splinters in your hands and stuff like that, and use that as a walking stick. You know, you can even uh, mount a knob on the top of your walking stick that's metal, okay? Um, the next one you're going to want to watch for, and it's even more important to watch for these than any of the others, is mountain lions. Okay, Mountain lions, um, you'll rarely see them. Okay? Most people that have, were attacked by mountain lions never saw them coming because mountain lions sneak up from behind you. Okay? They ambush, ambush you from overhead. So if you're walking along a, a cliff or a really steep mountain, look up. Okay? Uh, keep your head on a swivel. Now, you know, a lot of people say, well, you don't need to tell me that. I always keep my head on a swivel. Well, that may be so. Uh, I've been stalked by a mountain lion, and it's not fun. Okay, it's scary. Um, mountain lions prefer solitary prey, first of all. Uh, so if you're by yourself, you're at more risk than if you're with somebody. So, you know, if you do have to bug out, and try to bug out with a buddy. You know, that's... Safety in numbers, you've heard that before, and, and, and it's very true with bears or mountain lions or, or roving bands of zombie hordes, whatever, mutant biker zombies, whatever, okay? 
being you know, being a lone wolf isn't going to save you in any kind of a bad situation. Um, being with somebody where you have two brains instead of one, okay? Remember the saying, two is one and one is none? Well, there you go. Same goes for your brains. Because what one person doesn't think of, the other one might, okay? Um, like I said, uh, mountain lions are sneaky. If you make noise, um, they're less apt to attack you. However, any with bears or mountain lions, any high-pitched squealy noises or girly noises, or or if you yell at them and you're real high-pitched, that that simulates prey. Okay. Um, watch videos on this, please. Go back to YouTube and watch a bunch of videos on bears and and mountain lions. Okay, you will see what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, the next category is snakes. Okay. Uh, snakes are probably going to be the most that you would run into. Chances are. Because, you know, running into bears and mountain lions is rare. Okay, let's let's just face it. It's it's pretty rare. Um, it's not something you're going to account and encounter every day, most likely, unless you're doing something wrong. But snakes are something that are everywhere. Okay. Um, now, you know, you got your rattlesnakes, your pit vipers, water moccasins, and then there's coral snakes. Now, with coral snakes... There's two things that look like coral snakes, okay? Um, here's, here's uh, if it's got a black nose, it's poisonous, okay? If the coral snake has a black nose, well, if it looks like a coral snake and has a black nose, it is a coral snake. Now, they're pretty uh, docile kind of snake, okay? Coral snakes are not real aggressive. But here's the rhyme for that. If red touches yellow, it'll kill a fellow. If red touches black, it's a friend of Jack, okay? Just remember that rhyme. Red touches yellow, kill a fellow. All right, so if the, if the, if there's little yellow rings on either side of the red, it's a coral snake, highly highly toxic. Okay, and then you've got your rattlesnake, and you've got your uh, Mojave, uh, Mojave greens, excuse me. Um, now there's two different types of snake toxin, pretty much. There's hematoxin and there's neurotoxin. Okay, both can kill you. Neurotoxin even more so than hematoxin. Hematoxin affects your blood. Neurotoxin affects your nervous system, can make you stop breathing, etc., etc. Okay, your best bet to avoid snake bite is to walk with a heavy tread, and what I mean by that is don't tiptoe. Okay, um, they can feel vibrations in the ground when you're walking. Okay, and if you have a walking stick and you're poking it out in front of you, you know, as you go, you know, you're walking and you're poking your stick, it will jar the ground just a little bit. Okay, and it also will spook away snakes. So, and just watch where you put your hands and feet, okay? Because a snake that's shedding can't see and they'll strike at anything, okay? They have heat receptors. Uh, I think there's a hole in their snout or maybe some of them have a hole. Anyway, they detect heat, okay? They're your heat-seeking missile there. Um, they strike at anything that, that's heat. So, be careful where you, if you're climbing a mountain and you're climbing rocks, which you shouldn't be doing anyway, but... If you have to, then you have to. But be careful where you stick your hands and feet. And again, wear gloves. Now, that doesn't mean that fangs can't penetrate good leather gloves. They can. Um, now, snakes can either dry bite you or wet bite you. Okay, Dry bite means they just bite you to get you away from them. They're not hunting. Wet bite means they inject venom. And they can control the amount of venom that they inject. So, be careful with that. Now, one way to tell... There's a couple of ways to tell a poisonous snake from a non-poisonous snake. Common traits of poisonous snakes are they're big and fat. Okay? They're real fat. Um, like rattlesnakes, they have rattles. But I sometimes of the year they don't rattle. So you have to be careful with that. Now, another way to tell pit vipers or poisonous snakes from non-poisonous snakes is non-poisonous snakes, now you're not going to be wanting to look these things in the eye. Okay? But they have round pupils, non-poisonous snakes. They're like, oh, okay. Um, a poisonous snake has an elliptical pupil. It's like it's like this in their eye. It's up straight up and down, kind of like sort of like a cat eye. Okay. Um, so you have to be careful with that. Now the next thing I bought, I've got notes because there was so many things. Um, next thing you might have to watch out for are spiders and scorpions. Okay. Now, you hear all these people, let's make a debris shelter and 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 throw leaves and, and stuff into the 
for, to lay on. Well, that's fine. Just make sure there ain't no spiders or scorpions in it or centipedes. Now, centipedes is another thing, too. I don't know anything about those. Um, watch where you put your hands and feet. If you're going to be making a debris shelter, make sure you knock off all the sticks. You don't want to be carrying a spider back and putting it in your shelter because you didn't think to look at it. Now, there's this, you know, there's quite a few spiders out there. Uh, the two main poisonous ones will be like the black widow and your brown recluse. The brown recluse really is not very active until it gets very hot. The black widow is very easy to recognize. The brown recluse blends in. Okay. Um, just watch where you put your hands and feet. If you're moving rocks, be careful when you turn them over. Okay. Uh, if you're reaching down into some brush to get get a limb, be careful where you put your hand. Look for webs. You know. Now. You, you know, any spider webs, of course, being an obvious sign. And while you're walking in through the woods and you're running across spider webs, there's spiders attached to those webs. So take your walking stick and wave it in front of you to knock the spider webs down before they get to you, before you get to it, excuse me. Um, another major hazard, which affects more than anybody, would be ticks, okay? There are over 800 species of ticks worldwide. About 40 of them in the western United States will actually bite a human. Um, there's a lot of things you can get from a tick bite. You can get Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Babesiosis, no, I'm going to butcher these pr pronunciation, Ehrlichiosis, bull, you know, and there's a lot of things, the bullseye rash. I'm, I'm going to put some links below so you can investigate this yourself. Um, now, I'm not a doctor, so don't take this as a device, but the only thing I could find that online that said that you could use against a possible tick-borne illness would be doxycycline. Now, that doesn't mean that's the only antibiotic, and that doesn't mean that you should take an antibiotic. You should make sure that you're, you know, you, you, you might have a tick-borne disease to begin with. The bullseye rash, flu-like symptoms, um, you know, also have some, for, for any kind of a tick-borne illness or anything, you're going to need to have probably some antihistamine. Okay, Benadryl, okay, because some people have high allergic reactions to those. Um, now, the main one that you get um, diseases from would be your deer tick, okay? They like to hang out in grassy areas and, and brush along trails. Um, now, if you're hunting deer and stuff, you're liable to come into contact with them. Uh, one thing you can do to help minimize ticks would be to... Tuck your pants into your boots, and preferably you have some good tall top boots, okay? If you have extra tape, use it. If not, you know, ace bandage, whatever. Just try to keep them from coming up your pants leg. Wear light-colored clothes, okay? So you can see them and pick them off. Um, wear long sleeves with, with tight tight wrists, elastic wrists or, or, or snug wrists. Now, this might not work in 120-degree weather, but um, let's see. There's a halo around a bite, too. It looks like a bullseye. It's like a halo. It's like a ring around. Sometimes they're thin. Sometimes they're thick. Sometimes it's swollen. Sometimes it's not. Uh, just don't take chances, okay? The min you know, if you're hiking with a buddy, take turns leading every once in a while, okay? So they can look at your back. You can keep an eye on your front, but it's hard to check your back, okay? Um, your best bet is to cut your hair short, Okay? As short as you can get it. And that way, nothing can hide in your hair. And I remember when I was a kid, we were down in Missouri. My dad was having some people clear some brush. And every one of those guys were the, and this was in the 70s. There was a lot of hippie type dudes. Long beards, mustaches, long hair. They came in and they were crawling in their beards. It was just really bad. They ticks were so bad. The, the ones that actually came back the next day were clean shaven. Okay. Um, so, you know, mountain man with the big beard, that's great until you get it full of ticks. Okay. Now, um, another thing you have to worry about, okay, is uh, tripping and falling. Okay. Don't take chances. If there's a little, uh, if there's a little stream or a little tiny ravine and you can jump over it, don't jump over it. Climb down and climb back up. Be careful where you put your feet because if you sprain or break a leg, you're done. Okay. You are going to lay there until somebody finds you or until you die or until a predator comes along and eats you, okay. which is another good reason to have somebody to bug out with because they will know where you are. And then speaking of that, you need to let people know which way you're going. If you're just going hiking, let them know where you're going to be at. Okay. 
If you're camping, let them know where you're going to camp at. If you're bugging out and you're by yourself, you have to be quadruple careful. Okay, You do not want an injury while you're bugging out because that's, that's a game changer right there. Um, if you're bugging out with a friend, okay, and you're going to go scout, let them know which direction you go and about what time you think you'll be back. They can come look for you if you don't show up. Okay. Um, if you have to cross water, and that's going to be something you're going to have to do sooner or later, unless you live in the desert and you can ride out any flashlights. Do not cross fast moving water above falls, which is, you know, seems silly to say this, but people don't think of that. And rapids. Okay. Wherever you're going to cross, make sure that there's a, like a, a, a calmer area area below you because if you slip and fall and you get swept downstream a little bit or river, down river, you want to be able to get into that calmer area and swim out. Okay. Um, again, if you think that you might have a problem and you're by yourself, okay, this is one of the good reasons to have a lot of cordage, okay? If you have to cross a river, now, you know, that's not going to work on something like the Mississippi, okay? Or a great, big, huge river. But any smaller rivers or fast-moving in gorges and, and whatnot, it's not a bad thing to have, okay? What you do is you take your cordage and you tie it around yourself. You run it around a tree and you tie it back, well, you, you loop it back around yourself, kind of like if you're rappelling. Okay, and as you cross, you let out the line until you get to the other side, you let it go, and then you reel it in, and then it comes around the tree and back. Okay, and that way, if you do get swept, the, you'll get swept back to the bank, and you can get back out, or pull yourself forward until you can get back out. So, you know, those are just a couple of things. Now, when, like I said before, always wear gloves, you know, wear gloves, um, because if you're raking up leaf litter to put as a cushion for your bed and you grab a centipede or a spider or a scorpion they're gonna bite right into your skin okay if you have gloves on that's not gonna happen now it might not help with snakes but it helps with other things so you definitely want to wear gloves <coughs> it's not a bad idea if you're gathering leaf litter to toss it okay and then look gather it up just kind of fluff it around and make sure that there's nothing crawling in there because what you're going to want to do is be very careful about that. There is, you know, in an SHTF situation, there is no help. None. Unless you have a buddy. And then some help, it's going to be impossible for them to do anything about. Okay. Um, I have a snake bite kit that actually suctions venom out. And you can buy those. I don't know where. You'll have to just search for them. Now, is that a cure? No. Is that going to save you? Probably not. But it's better than nothing. Okay. You know, they say, oh, cut the things. Well, you know... Just how much infection are you going to get from them cuts, too, on top of it? Because snake fangs and spider spider fangs and extremely bacteria-rich. Those things are, they, I mean, just the, the infection from a spider bite, not even counting toxins or poison that it injects into you, is horrible. Okay, I've been bit by a spider. I was lucky. But I had a spot this big around, and it raised up probably a half an inch, and it was real hard pad on my leg where it bit me. It was some sort of a staph infection that, in, that it gave me, okay? So you definitely want to be careful with your hands and feet, okay? Don't be running around barefoot. That's, that's something you do not need to do. Don't be running around without your gloves on if you're gonna touch anything. And if you're, even if you're just sitting in camp and you're cooking, you're gonna need your gloves on to handle the pans, okay? You're gonna need your gloves on to grab that wood that might have a spider in it to feed the fire. So, um, all of these things. Now, if you're chopping wood, okay, if you're having to break some rock, uh, for whatever reason, you know, whether, whether you see a cave behind a rock, but the rock's stuck and you have, and you feel like you got to try to break the edge of it, you need to have some, some safety goggles or something on your eyes because it just takes one sliver or one chip to put your eye out of commission forever. Just one. That's all it takes is one. And you don't know which way they're going to fly. So, you know, having a good set of safety glasses in a nice hard case so that they don't get ruined and scratched up and, and broken and, 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 you know, all that kind of stuff. Have a good hard case for them inside your bug out bag. So, 
And, you know, just you have to be safety conscious if you are, if you are alone especially. You have to be safety conscious if you're bugging out all the time. Every minute of every day and all night long. You know, hang your food away from your bug out camp. Okay, at least 100 feet. Maybe 100 yards, I think is what it is. No, I don't remember. You'd look it up. I'm going to, you know, I'll give you some links, but definitely do your own homework on that. Um, your, your cooking utensils will draw in bears and critters. Your, your food, gum, chapstick, anything like that can draw in bears and things of that nature. Um, another thing you have to worry about when you're bugging out is smaller critters like skunks and squirrels and, or not skunks and, and raccoons and things of that nature. Um, you know, and then there's always the risk of rabies. So definitely want to be careful with that. Store all your stuff away from your camp. Only sleep there. Okay. Don't cook there. Don't leave your food there. So make a triangle. You have your food here. You have your camp down here, and then you have your cooking area down over here. And just try to make it, you know, it's not going to be a perfect situation, okay? But if you cook away from where you sleep, the cooking odors over there aren't going to draw the bears over here, okay? If you hang your food away from where you sleep, the same story, okay? Um, if you put your cooking and your, and, your, and your food in one spot, and the bears figure out how to get up there and get it, that your stuff's gone, and then you're hungry. Um, so definitely want to keep your stuff separated. Okay. Sleep from food, from, cook, from preparation area. Wash all your pans out immediately. Okay. Don't leave them dirty at your camp. Okay. Uh, now in cases where there is no water, there might not be a whole lot you can do about it, but here's one thing you can do. In the olden days, they used to, a lot of times they'd use sand to scour out their pans. If you can find a sandy area and you don't have a lot of water, start scrubbing it with sand. Okay, Sand is abrasive. It will take the stuff out of there eventually. So, um, now that we've gone through all of those, and this is not a complete list by any stretch. Okay, This is not a comprehensive list of any dangers. This is just the most common ones that I can think of that you might run across if you're bugging out or camping. If you think of any more, put them in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, check out the links below because I'm going to put some links to these articles and stuff that I've read there, um, as well as a bunch of stuff in the CDC and different things of that nature. Uh, I'll put whatever I have down below, okay? And uh, y'all come back and see me.